are you planning to become a digital nomad? I am a freelance writer and digital nomad. I would like to share my experience with you. In my experience as a digital nomad, I've realized that um, the learning curve can be quite steep. Ladies and gentlemen, Alitalia, Sky Team Partner is pleased to welcome you in Rome from Vicino. Another day, another airport. Hi, I'm Paola. I'm a freelance writer and digital nomad and also the founder and chief editor of a digital nomad Europe. stopover at uh, Rome Airport on my way out to London. I'm making a, quite a complete transition to becoming a digital nomad. Up until now, I was a digital nomad but mostly on paper, whereas uh, now I'm almost completely homeless and therefore I'm embracing a nomadic lifestyle. I'm, I'm taking the opportunity today just to share with you a few tips. For example, the flight that I booked today, I, I found uh, a very convenient and cheap uh, fare through kayak.co.uk. Basically, I've compared different types of um, airfares and uh, compared to my usual direct flight, um, I tend to travel quite, quite often between uh, London and Trieste, for example. The direct flight was quite expensive, but I found an indirect flight with a transfer in Rome, uh, which was half the price, and therefore I've decided to book uh, this flight compared to my regular uh, flight. So I know that uh, people tend to use Skyscanner quite a lot, but I found in recent years that the uh, prices were not very accurate, whereas with kayak.co.uk, not sponsored by the way, um, the fares were um, updated up to the minute. The only downside is that sometimes advertised fares can increase at the last minute. By the time you uh, click on a fare and you are redirected to, say, a, a booking agent, the airline may have increased the fare in that any comparison websites you will always have to double check that uh, fares are not increased uh, because the price advertised may, may be subject to some changes according to the availability of seats on, on the airplane. Another thing that I've noticed um, working as a digital nomad is uh, your equipment. For example, I'm a, a freelance writer and um, I was doing some uh, transcribing and I've realized that the headphones that I have, which are these ones, the uh, e voices uh, are not noise cancelling and also the volume may not be high enough, so the sound was not very clear. I was trying to do some work on the airplane. Unfortunately, the uh, background noise was very loud and the sound of the di dictation was quite low. So I would recommend if you're doing any kind of uh, transcription work that you invest in very solid uh, noise cancelling headphones. So that's definitely something on my to-do list. And by the way, if you have any recommendations for noise um, cancelling headphones, I'm literally all ears. Another thing that I found uh, as a digital nomad is um, organizing my time. I tend to travel mostly to visit family and therefore I have to plan my day according to the activities that I have. 
and I always have to make sure that I prioritise my work so that I can deliver projects on time. So it's a balancing act between uh, your private life and your work life. And I think many digital nomads or wannabe digital nomads think that private life comes first, which is, of course, <laughs> your preferred and ideal scenario. But um, your clients are actually sponsoring your lifestyle. So um, depending on the time zone you're operating in, um, make sure that you are engaging with your clients uh, when they are at work. And I know that probably what I'm saying is quite um, common sense, but it's something that I had to learn as well. So I have to, you know, each day carve up some time just to focus on client work and then I can get on with the rest of the day. I would say that probably that's the, 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 main, um, the main priority as a digital nomad is to uh, have a good, uh, good time management. Also, if you are a digital nomad yourself and you're quite experienced, uh, please make sure that you share any uh, advice and tips that you may have in the comments. Basically, I've noticed as I was coming to my gate that uh, flights to uh, London are already treated as non-EU. So basically, there's a whole area in this airport, uh, I'm at Fiumicino Airport in Rome. Um, it's uh, Area E, um, which um, groups together all the flights to non-EU countries. And I was quite surprised because um, England hasn't uh, left the EU just yet. So um, I'm filming this in 2018 and Brexit hasn't happened yet. So I thought it was quite um, interesting that um, UK flights are treated differently from uh, EU flights. So just a random fact for you to know. Another random fact, uh, in, um, in this airport in Rome, uh, I have to say, I've seen some uh, nice and quirky things like um, the police uh, force are using um, hoverboard type um, transport. And also I've seen that they have smoking cabins. So that's the smoking area over there. That's a cabin uh, that holds up to eight people, I believe, um, to get their cigarette fix. Nice views. This is a sandwich with porchetta, which is roast pork, just to keep with the um, pulled pork theme from uh, a previous vlog. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome on board of the Alpha Crew, Captain Sting. To give you some information, now uh, we are moving uh, a little bit late, uh, just a few minutes, but uh, we, we, we hope to reduce it uh, at the arrival. Mark, you are going to reach the exit. Leave all your belongings behind the board.
I hope you found this video useful and if you did please give it a thumbs up and why not subscribe to my channel for more information.